So in my last session, I uh, talked about the permutation group and before the session ended, I introduced a special type of symmetric group S3. Under, under some special uh, condition by which we represented capital A as well as capital G. Here I'm going to give you the formal definition of the symmetric group. Uh, and uh, in, the, in the light of permutation, and you remember the study of symmetric group is very important in abstract algebra. And uh, you know, you always remember that study of group theory is a kind of study of kaleidoscope. You how to how to you visualize symmetries in things. So the, the, the symmetric group is actually very important from practical point of view also. So you will later understand that, but right now let, let me give you the formal definition of it. Definition. Suppose for any positive integer, suppose for any positive integer n, i n denotes the finite set Okay, then the set of all permutations defined on I n forms a group. under the binary operation under the binary operation composition of two functions this group is called the symmetric group symmetric group on n elements okay and is denoted by S n and it is also clear that cardinality of S n will be n factorial. That you is that is always that this is always uh, already clear from our previous dis discussion. Okay, so if we denote if we denote an element, if we denote a function, not element, if we denote, denote a function by say alpha, then alpha will be operating on each of the elements one, two, three, dot, 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 up to n. And under the operation of alpha, under the function alpha, one, the image of one will be alpha one. The image of two will be alpha two. The image of three will be alpha three. 
the image of n will be alpha n. Where we can write that alpha i denotes the image of i under the function alpha and which is true for all i from one to up to n. We can denote, we can define alpha in the following way also. We write all the elements above. These are the image, this, this is the pre-image and the images of each element written just below the element. Okay, so this is how the symmetric group is defined. So obviously, if we talk about the symmetric group S3, the number of elements will be six because it is three factorial. Symmetric group is a kind of permutation group. And as you can see, that number of elements present in S3 is three factorial, which is finite. In general, number of elements present in Sn is n factorial, which is finite. And therefore, symmetric group is an example of finite group. Symmetric group is an example of finite group. Let us try to find out how this composition operation now works. Okay. Let us try to find how the composition operation operation now works on the symmetric group. Let's try to find it out. How composition of mappings, composition of mapping in permutation group works. Let us consider two elements alpha one from the group S3 from the symmetric group S3. So let us choose this element. Let us call, let us name this element by alpha one and let us choose an element which we denote by alpha two, where alpha one and alpha two has been chosen from S3. Remember S3, the cardinality of S3 is six. Let us try to find out the composition of these two elements because the composition is the operation which is defined on the symmetric group. Let us try to find out how it works. So to find the composition, we will first write the element alpha one, we'll put dot, then we'll write the element alpha two. But if you can recall the definition of the the workings of the composition function, you know that uh, the composition function to, to apply composition function like f dot g, we first operate the inside. We try to find out the image of x with respect to g and that image then becomes the pre-image with respect to the function f. Similar is the case over here. We will first try to operate we'll try to find out the image of this element on the right hand side. And then we are going to look at the image of the image on the left hand side. So to find it out, what I will do is that we'll first put the parenthesis like this. We'll first write the row above as one, two, three, because, because that is not going to change. After all, we are interested in finding out the image or image of image of one, two, three, or image of images of one, two, three. So <clears throat> we are going to write one, two, three on the above row. Next, we are going to see from the right hand side. So direction, the movement will be from right to left. Remember, the movement of operation will be from right to left. You see, the image of three here in this element alpha two is two. 
So three is actually going to two in alpha two. And in alpha one, the two is going to three. Isn't it? Three is going to two in alpha with respect to in, a, in the element alpha two or under the operation of under the function alpha two. And in with respect to the function alpha one, two is going to three. So ultimately, alpha, in alpha one dot alpha two, three is actually going to three. So we'll write it over here. We'll, we'll read it in the following manner. Three goes to two and two goes to three. So it becomes three. Second, you observe over here that two goes to one with respect to alpha two and one goes to two with respect to alpha one. So two goes to one and one goes to two. So we get two. Next, we see that one goes to three with respect to alpha two. And then this three goes to one with respect to alpha one. So one goes to three, one goes to three, and three goes to one. So one goes to one. So we are getting this element, one, two, three, one, two, three. This element, which is also a member of S3, you know? Next, we are going to find, let us see, let us try to look at what happens when we find alpha two dot alpha one. So in this case, what we are going to do, we are going to write alpha two first of all on the left hand side and alpha one on the right hand side, one, two, three, and two, three, one. So as before, we are going to find what happens over here. Remember, that the movement is always from, the movement of the operation is always from right to left. So this was actually for that. Now I'm going to find what happens for this. Now three goes to one over here with respect to alpha one and one goes to three with respect to alpha two. So three goes to one and one goes to three. So three goes to three. Two goes to three with respect to alpha one. And three goes to two with respect to alpha two. So two goes to two. One goes to two with respect to alpha one and two goes to one with respect to alpha two. So we get one goes to one. So same thing is happening over here. Alpha one dot alpha two is equal to alpha two dot alpha one. And since this uh, image of these elements remains same, in this case, in this element, one, two, three, one, two, three. The image of one is one, image of two is two, and image of three is three. So we can say, say for example, we can denote this element, this special element by capital E. We can denote this special element by capital E. Okay. So actually here we have observed that alpha one dot alpha two is equal to E and alpha two dot alpha one is equal to E. Let us try to find out quickly what happens when we consider an element, say for example, alpha three, let us uh, take an element alpha three by say, for example, here I have considered two, three, one and three, one, two. So two, one, three. Let's, let's take it into consideration and let us try to find out what happens when we multiply alpha three by E. If we consider this composition, what happens? So we'll write one, two, three, and two, one, three. And you'll write one, two, three, and one, two, three. So now you can quickly write the composition. You have got the rule. So we'll write the above row. And you see three goes to three and three goes to three. So we get this. 
2 goes to 2 and 2 goes to 1, isn't it? 2 goes to 2 and 2 goes to 1. So we get this. And 1 goes to 1 and 1 goes to 2, we get this. So 1, 2, 3, 2, 1, 3, which is same as alpha 3, which is same as alpha 3. Now, if I ask you to form a table like where I'm considering the column heading says E alpha one, alpha two, alpha three, alpha four, and alpha five. There were six elements in S3. One of the elements is being denoted by E. And here also I'm writing E alpha one, alpha two, alpha three, alpha four, and alpha five. If I, if I write it in this manner, and if I ask you to fill up this table, okay? So probably you are going to find, and you can check it by yourself, that this element EE e will be E. This element alpha one E will be alpha one. This will be alpha two. Alpha three dot E will be alpha three. Alpha four dot E will be alpha four. Alpha five dot E will be alpha five. And similar is the case over here. And this is operation, the operation which I'm considering is dot. Okay. So in this, you can check it by yourself. And from this, we can easily say that E is the identity operation, identity mapping, or Rather, I, send, I should say identity element of the symmetric group S3. In general, 1, 2, 3, dot, 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 n. You, you can consider this E as E3 if you like. Okay. Since I'm considering S3, you can write it as E3. Similarly, you can consider this EN to be the identity element, the identity element of the symmetric group SN. That can be easily checked. Look at the table by which we are trying to express the composition of mappings. You can read it as alpha dot E, alpha two dot alpha dot alpha one, alpha two dot alpha one, or alpha one dot alpha two, whatever. You can fill it up. The rest of the things you can fill it up. But the look at the table, look at the chart by which you are trying to represent the composition of operations, composition of mappings. Such kind of table is called Kelly table. And it is not used only in the case of permutation mapping. It is used actually in case of all kinds of finite finite groups, which we have. Kelly table is represented in the following manner. It is called Kelly table. Okay. So uh, this is the scenario by which we can actually apply the uh, permutation of, uh, we can actually uh, try to find out, uh, we can find out the, uh, uh, composition of two mappings. Here I have observed that alpha dot alpha one dot alpha two and alpha two dot alpha one, they are actually same. Is it always the case? That is a big question. Is it always that alpha one alpha i dot alpha j is equal to alpha j dot alpha i for all ij, this is a question. We are considering, we are interested in S3. Here, our consider, uh, point of concentration is S3. So, it, is it always, since it is happening for alpha 1 dot alpha 2 and alpha 2 dot alpha 1, is it will, will it happen for every element, every composition? That is a big question. So I shall ask you, first of all, I will ask you to test. This is a kind of homework for you. You can try to find out whether it is getting satisfied for all operations or not. 
okay we will try to find out all sorts of composition with respect to alpha 1 alpha 2 it's a problem it is not a just a homework it is a problem i'm giving you the first problem that i'm ask, asking you to uh, do by yourself at home check whether it is holding for all ij belonging to s3 And uh, if you want, you can uh, try to find out this thing here only. If anybody, any one of you is doing the calculation, um, you, can, you can try with, uh, I'm trying to help you out actually. Let's check another one. Uh, take the element here, what I've taken, let's see. Two, three, one and three, one, two, okay. Let us try to consider an element, say for example, say alpha 4, which is uh, 1, 2, 3. What was there? 2, 3, 1, and 2, 1, 3, 1. Okay. Let us. And what about this? Let us try to find it out. I'm asking all of you to check. Now I'm, I'm making this homework as classwork for the time being. Uh, if it works, then I'll, this will just be considered as a classwork. It will no longer be con considered as a homework. But if it doesn't work, this particular example doesn't work, then I'll keep it as homework. Okay, I'll con convert the status of the problem as a homework problem. So let's try to find out what happens with alpha 4 dot alpha 5 and alpha 5 dot alpha 4. Alpha 4 dot alpha 5, let us try to find it out. 1, 2, 3, 2, 1, 3, 2, 1, 3, 1, 2, 3. 1, 3, 2. 1, 3, 2. So, the, the composition gives me the following element. 3 goes to 2 and 2 goes to 1. So, 3 is going to 1. 2 goes to 3 and 3 goes to 3. So, 2 goes to 3. 1 goes to 1 and 1 goes to 2. So, 1 goes to 2. We are getting 2, 3, 1. We named 231 as alpha 1 in our previous example. So we are actually, after composing, after taking the composition of alpha 4 dot alpha 5, we are getting alpha 1. Okay. What happens if I do this? So 3 goes to 3 and 3 goes to 2, 2 goes to 1 and 1 goes to 1, 1 goes to 2 and 2 goes to 3. Ah, something different is coming. 3, 1, 2, we denote 3, 1, 2 by alpha 2. Okay. Yeah, all right. So it remains as your home, not as your homework, it remains as your classwork. We are actually, we are fortunate and I am fortunate enough that my instinct helped me out in this regard uh, we have got the elements what was my what were my elements what was my step actually my set was s3 which contained e alpha 1 alpha 2 alpha 3 alpha 4 alpha 5 with their usual meaning under the operation dot we have found that alpha 4 dot alpha 5 is not equal to alpha 5 dot alpha 4. Since we have studied already you have studied mathematical logic 
what was the theory on what, what was an important theory in the mathematical logic let us try to recall the mathematical logic said if we want to disprove something then it is sufficient to show at least one example is there for which the result under consideration is not true or if you want to negate for all x then it is equal to their existence if you can recall this was the result so if i want to negate for all x belonging to s3 where the symmetric group that will become there exist an x belonging to s3 okay now according to that i can write that there exist x belonging to s3 or or i must write in this manner there exist x comma y belonging to s3 so context is defined such that x dot y is not equal to y dot x c <clears throat> or there exist x comma y belonging to s3 such that x dot y and not y dot x or or it, it is better to write it in this following manner uh, not y dot x will be something else yeah it will be uh, it will be it will be sub uh, better if i represent it in this manner it is clear it is clear from the context what i mean to say so what was my objective what was my question from which we started the problem my question was first of all i actually want to study wanted to study uh, this was my question that uh, how composition of mapping works my second question was this one is only is it always that alpha i dot alpha j is equal to alpha j dot alpha i so the answer is no it is not always true no there exist elements like alpha 4 and alpha 5 for which this is not holding so therefore s3 is not a commutative Therefore, S3, which is the symmetric group defined on I3, is a finite non commutative. Group. Okay. Here is a question for you. You just try to think: Is there any other finite non-commutative group?
other than symmetric try to look for this answer to this given question okay this is your homework is there any other finite group finite non commutative group other than the symmetric group symmetric group is one example let us now try to prove the following result the general result which goes like this if n is a positive integer such that such that n greater than or equal to 3 then the symmetric group Sn is a non commutative group. We have already discussed the meaning of this particular problem and we have discussed it from the perspective of the symmetric group S3. They are now asking us to prove this result for a for the general symmetric group of order n factorial. So since we already know from our previous example that you know this is not actually holding, this is not true. Symmetric group is not a uh, commutative group. So it would be better, it would be sufficient for us to show an example in the case of SN for which the result is not holding. That is alpha, alpha i dot alpha j is not same as alpha j dot alpha i. So let us try to prove it. The proof is very simple. Let n greater than or equal to 3. Why we are taking n greater than or equal to 3? That is a question. Because for n equal to 3, you have already studied it. Okay, n equal to 2, you can study uh, very well because uh, it will be simpler than the case of n equal to 3. Now we want to extend the result. You want to check the result for n greater than c that is we are interested about so therefore we are taking n greater than or equal to 3 let alpha beta belonging to sn be defined by let us define alpha by alpha 1 equal to 2 alpha 2 is equal to 1 and alpha x is equal to x for all x is not equal to 1 comma 2 beta 1 is equal to 3 beta 3 is equal to 1 and beta x is equal to x for all x not equals to 1 comma 3 okay then how does my alpha look like my alpha look like this 1 2 3 4 n and you see alpha goes to alpha 1 goes to 2 so i am writing here 2 alpha 2 goes to 1 so i am writing here here 1 and rest of the elements remain same and beta is going like this according as per my assumption that uh, beta 1 goes to 3 beta 3 goes to 1 and rest of the elements remain same okay and now if you calculate now, if you calculate alpha dot beta, I'm not writing again. You can do it in by mental calculation. Okay, uh, just to save uh, save the space. 
let us write one two three four dot 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 n let's see what happens <clears throat> From 4 to n, nothing will change. No problem. They will remain same. Now here, you see, if 3 goes to 1 and 1 goes to 2, then if 3 will go to 2. If 3 goes to 1 and 1 goes to 2, 3 will go to 2. If 2 goes to 2 and 2 goes to 1, we'll get this. And if 1 goes to 3, 3 and 3 goes to 3, we'll get this. So we have got from by calculating alpha dot beta, we have actually got this one. What about beta dot alpha? From 4 to n, nothing will happen. They will remain same. Let's check from 3 beta dot alpha so alpha comes first so 3 goes to 3 and 3 goes to 1 so we get 1 2 goes to 1 and 1 goes to 3 we get 3 and <clears throat> 3 goes to 3 and 3 goes to sorry well, i'm again checking 3 goes to 3 and 3 goes to 1. So 3 goes to 1. 2 goes to 1 and 1 goes to 3. So this. 1 goes to 2 and 2 goes to 2. So this. Okay. Now you see, you see, look at this. Here I have got this element and here I have got this element. Rest of the elements are same, but here is a change. You got 3, 1, 2 and we have got 2, 3, 1. So obviously, this shows that this shows that there exist alpha beta in SN such that such that alpha dot beta is not equal to beta dot alpha. And therefore, this implies for n greater than or equal to 3, Sn is, I'm writing here, non-abelian or non-commutative or not commutative, whatever you want to write. If you ask me why, have you, why am I setting this example, one alpha goes to one, uh, alpha one goes to two, alpha takes 1 to 2 and 2 to 1 and beta takes 1 to 3 and 3 to 1. I can set any example because as we already know that if you want to negate for all x, we have to find out there exist x. So if at least I can say, uh, I can show one x, one such x, which is not satisfying the required property, then my job is done. So therefore, I have set the example like this. This is the trick you can say. So with this, I'm going to conclude my today's exam uh, class. Okay, hope you have hope you have understood the logic. Okay, best of luck for tomorrow's exam, and after that, we'll continue with the permutation group because further more uh, discussions are required for this particular chapter. So, so wish you all the best for tomorrow's examination. You prepare and best of luck.